always had to overcome things in my life. I just use it as motivation every day just to prove that I can and I still do. An aggressive scorer, he's always been that way. He's always been a guy that, that can score in different ways, whether it's catch and shoot, uh, whether it's running off some screens, or whether it's you know dribbling into a shot. Uh, I mean, it's probably the strength of his game is the ability to, to score. And when you hear that, the fact that you've had a stroke when you're 19 years old, I mean, it's, it's pretty shocking. When you're a teenager, when you're young, when you're in college, you feel like, in a way, you're invincible and that nothing will ever, it can't really happen to you. You hear about it, but it can't happen to you. It was insane because, I mean, it's, you sit there and you're like, wow, I really could have lost my life. You know, anytime you have a health scare with one of your players, you, you know, as a coach, you, you stop what you're doing and really want to know what's going on. You know, we, we were worried because um, he seemed, you know, like the model student athlete in terms of health and and uh, he even worked out the day that he had it. We were very surprised by the call that you know something's happened to Jordan and, and uh, they're gonna take him to the hospital. So initially we went to the ER, we were in the ER for a few hours. And around the next day we had a meeting with the neurologist, we got more CT scans, MRIs, you know and then the week after that we just continued following and trying to find what was the cause of the stroke. He went through the day just like everything else was normal and statistics exams are always in the evening. And then I went to go take the test and in the, it was a stats class and in the class there was Sammy Watkins and Fanuel Kivita who played soccer here and they were just like, hey, how you doing? I, I mean, I couldn't really articulate my words so I was just like, oh, I feel kind of weird today. He was actually having the stroke while he was taking his statistics exam. Jordan's uh was scheduled to have a lift and we were in there getting ready to start. He was, I knew he was coming from class, it sent him a text and started moving the lift along to get ready. The guys were in there to go and Jordan wasn't there so we went ahead and got started. I get back home and I drive primarily with my left hand. So the left side of my body is kind of like shutting down, it's feeling a lot of numbness. And uh, so I have to drive and I try to pull out of the parking lot and I like hit the curb. But somehow I just get to Little John and I Get, get changed, go upstairs to the weight room. He came in, heard him come in. I said, hey, what's up, Rope? And I thought I said, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm feeling kind of off. And he claims he didn't understand a word that I said. Uh, none of that made any sense. Like what he was saying was just uh, gibberish. So had him sit down and uh, a couple of teammates and I got him down to sports medicine and they took good care of him. How does it affect you mentally when you know, you're that age, especially a young person, and you have a stroke. He's actually started talking to me about some of the cognitive um, impairments that he experienced where he could think about what he wanted to say, but he really wasn't able to express what those thoughts were. One third of all stroke victims experience a depression and anxiety. And Jordan actually went through a phase of that throughout the healing process. You know, he had to overcome the physical issues or aspects of the stroke, but he also had a lot of emotional aspects that he had to overcome during that same time. And so he had to regain that confidence in his physical self that he no longer had. He's much more appreciative and, and uh, excited about everything in, in his life. You can only hope that you find someone like these people, you know, I mean, there's just unrelentless support through everything, not just basketball, academically, personally, I mean, they're always there, whether you're doing bad or doing well. People around you actually care about your well-being and care about how you're actually doing rather than just how you're doing in the classroom or in the core. They care about you as a person. And just that support from everyone around Clemson in general, I mean, it really brings out the aspect of the whole Clemson family and makes you really believe in that. I mean, I'm just blessed to be here.